Hey guys, got this question. Uh, how do I deal with somebody who is disruptive or aggressive in group? And uh, I've been using it for, I don't know, 10 years I've been using this. It's kind of my standard structure. And so there's basically five tools that you have at your disposal uh, if you want to kind of correct somebody in your group. Uh, you can think of them like five trump cards if you're into you know playing euchre or spades or something. Five, there's five cards you get to play. And these are the five cards. And so the very first card you can play is the uh, the appeal to decency. The appeal to decency. All right, and the way that works is uh, most people want either want to be a decent person or want to be thought of as a decent person. So if you uh, demonstrate that this behavior is not congruent with decency, then eh, a lot of people that'll correct them. So uh, if if you've got somebody, you basically basically what you're saying is. Um, if you wouldn't do it in a kindergarten classroom, it's probably not appropriate in a small group. So, hey guys, we're just going to ask you to have at least the level of maturity that you'd have to have if you were going to be in, you know, kindergarten. So, uh, so the first appeal you get to make is the appeal to decency. The second appeal you get to make is the appeal to leadership. The appeal to leadership, and the way that works is that uh, if somebody has the ability to distract or disrupt your group, that usually means that they have leadership in them. Maybe not leadership character, but they have leadership skills. Otherwise, no one would pay attention to them. So if they all go off on a rabbit trail and your whole t group follows them, uh, the f if the group is following them, then they have leadership. And so part of what you need to do is figure out kind of like uh, you know, Black Beauty or, or uh, Man from Snow River or something. Like, how do I get this horse in harness? And so what you need to do is you need to go to this person to figure out how to get them in leadership, get their leadership uh, in harness for what you are trying to accomplish. So, for example, um, I've many times I've had a conversation where I say, okay, I'm really trying to get the whole group of figure teenagers. I've done this with teenagers a lot with uh, when I was leading uh student small groups. So you go into the, the group and you've got one kid that talks all the time, you've got one kid that just won't talk at all. So you go to the kid who talks all the time and say, hey man, I'm struggling with the group, I'm having trouble, I wonder if you can help me. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but Billy in the corner there, he just never talks. I can't, I'm not sure what it is, but I can't get him to talk. But I've noticed that the guys in the group really pay attention to you. I wonder if you um, can maybe help me, because I'm, I'm just not getting He's, I'm not breaking through with him. The reason I'm not breaking through is because you're talking all the time. But don't say that part. Just say, man, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out how to get Billy on board. I wonder if you would be willing to uh, help me here because I'm, I'm struggling. And this almost always works. Uh, almost always. If somebody is, uh, is disruptive but they have leadership skills, this kind of gets them aligned. And so, you know, time and time again, I've seen that kid, the loud kid, say, Billy, what do you think? And it's like, Oh, wow, he has my opinion. So uh, the second appeal you get to make is the appeal to leadership. The third appeal you can make is the appeal to norms. And so what that means is that, uh, that there's you need to have somebody in your group named Norm. No. Uh, a lot of people lean into uh, group covenants for this kind of thing. I don't feel that a covenant is necessarily a... Uh, effective tool anymore. That's a whole other discussion. But I do think that your group needs to have regular conversations about what's, what normal looks like in your group. And so uh, semi-regularly, regularly, a couple times a year, you need to say, how, how are things growing? Define the relationship, DTR. You got to define the relationship. Say, how are things going in the group? What are you guys liking? What are you not? What's normal for us? Especially early on in the group, it's important to say, hey, what do you guys want this group to be like? What, what kind of words do you want people to use to describe it? Uh, what kind of what kind of things do we value as a group? Whatever, however that language goes for you. Um, but then, once those things are defined, then you can go back to those things and say, "Hey, whoa, 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 whoa! Remember what we said? Not what I say as the leader, but what we what we said is that we want a group that does X, right? So we said that we want a group where we are not trying to fix each other, right? That's one of the things that we said. So you, I, I think." Seems like you're fixing right now, no fixing in group. Or hey, what we said is that this is a group where we want to be able to be honest with each other. And if you're gonna penalize somebody for being honest, or what we said is we want everybody to be a part of this. And so if you are gonna talk for the whole time, then not everybody's gonna to get to be a part of this. So whatever that looks like. Um, but but by defining normal and then calling the group back to or calling the individual back to, hey, we said this is what normal was, we're gonna do that. Uh, that's a really good corrective way. Uh, the fourth appeal that you get to make is the appeal to friendship. And the appeal to friendship goes like this. If somebody wrecks your group, 
You go to them privately and say, whoa, I thought we were friends. Why are you messing up my group? Why are you cutting my legs out from under me? And so uh, obviously this doesn't work unless you actually are friends with the person. But uh, but I've had this conversation just a few times, and it, it generally goes pretty well, where I've gone to somebody and said, I, I thought we were friends. I felt like you undercut me in every step of the way in our group today. So what, what was going on with that? Because I was kind of hurt, personally. I just felt like you were attacking me or something. What's going on? And I said, oh, no, I had nothing to do with you. It's this other thing. Okay, well, then let's talk that out. So uh, the appeal to friendship is the fourth appeal you can make. The, lo the last final appeal that you can really make as a small group leader is the appeal to authority. The appeal to authority. And so the appeal to authority is this. If you ever had a teacher that said, you will respect me because I'm the teacher, how much did you respect that teacher? Not a bit, right? So if you appeal to authority, you can't appeal to your own authority because if you had authority, if that person viewed you as having authority, then they wouldn't be disrespecting you, right? So if you appeal to authority, the authority you appeal to is whoever's up, up the stack from you. So if you say, like if our church, uh, you would say, hey, look, um, I, I don't know what to do in this situation. So if this is going to keep going on, I'm going to have to call Micah and Micah's going to have to come in and talk to us. Uh, and if I can't deal with it, I'm going to say, hey, um, if this doesn't shape up, I'm going to have to call David. I'm going to have to call the elders and you know, just work it up the chain. Um, that's obviously kind of the nuclear option. And so the thing to understand when you're, when you're looking at these, the appeal to decency, the appeal to leadership, the appeal to norms, the appeal to friendship, the appeal to authority, is that those are increasingly higher... Um, cards that you play. Once you play a bigger card, you can't go back and play a smaller card later. All right, you've you've always you know you've uh, set yourself up so you can never do that. So for example, you can't you can't say, hey, I thought we were friends, and then go back to them later and say, hey, have I have I mentioned you have leadership skills? It's not going to work, right? You can't say, oh, well, look, I'm gonna, I'm going to have to call Micah in here, and well, he'll get this thing fixed. You can't say that and then go and say, hmm, decency is right. So all of these cards you can play pub publicly or privately. Private is better unless you absolutely have to play it publicly in order to uh, to keep the group together. But private is better because then people are less likely to be resistant. But uh, you can play, play them publicly or privately, and you can only play them in order. So once you go up, you can't go back down. And once you uh, once you talk about norms, you can't go back and talk about leadership. Once you talk about friendship, you can't go back and talk about norms. So one more time, the five appeals you get to make, the five trump cards you get to play, decency, leadership, norms, friendship, and authority. Those are the five appeals. And I hope that's useful to you in your group.